In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who is tired? Raise your hand. Who's tired of the world as it is? Who's tired of the pandemic? Who's tired of themselves? Job was. He complained to God and received the greatest halftime speech of all time. You know, um, you, you go into halftime and you're down a few and the coach is upset. And what you need is a kick in the pants. What you need is to remember who you are. And that is what God does. God speaks out of the whirlwind and says to Job, excuse me. Job is complaining and God says, excuse me, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined the measurements? Surely you know. God speaks out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? And Job had been going through a lot. Who, who are you, Job, is what God asks. This is not your world. This is my world. And that kind of sounds tough. But as my old basketball coach used to say, listen, never worry about how I feel about you when I'm yelling at you. <laughs> worry when I stop. Because that means I've lost faith. I don't care anymore. So God knows us and God knows what is necessary for our true flourishing. Who are we to, uh, who are we to assume that we know what's best for us. We know what we think is best for us. Sometimes the only way to get through to us is through our pain. Jesus takes a similar tone with the disciples who are still somehow thinking about how to be the greatest. And he says, oh yeah? Who are you that want to be great? You don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Are you able to be baptized with my baptism? And they say, yes, that's what we want. And he says, okay, well, this is what it takes. You want to be great? Be a servant to others. You want to be first? You have to be last. In Job and Mark, we have two passages where God doesn't seem to be all that pastoral. In our day, in our world today, we would say, well, that's not, not very nice. But as Stanley Hauerwas says, pastoral care is about the upbuilding of the church by the transformation of our whole lives, which happens when we are given good work to do for God and for others. Good work frees us from the self-centeredness created by the hurts that we sometimes cherish. Will Willimon Another theologian agrees, and he says, worse even than death, says our baptism, is an unsummoned life. Every time the church baptizes, it enacts the countercultural word that my most pressing need is to have something more important to do with my life than my life. Sometimes God tells us things we don't want to know, but we need to hear for the sake of of our lives. Willeman tells this story about a sickly death parishioner. She's in the hospital and she describes this encounter with Jesus and says, I'm lying on the bed. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it out of here alive. I'm frightened and I'm worried. And Jesus has the nerve to waltz in here and suggest that I single-handedly fund the church's food ministry. As sick as I am, I thought others should be looking after me, not my looking after them. When people ask you about what makes you a Christian, what do you say? 
Because admittedly, this is not a flashy selling point for Jesus. This is not a flashy, exciting thing on its face, not in our culture. But then again, maybe we ought to trust the God who speaks out of the whirlwind. Does anybody here think we're living in a whirlwind? Out of the whirlwind, God speaks because we believe in the God who laid the foundations of the earth. Our God is not in politicians or movements or legislation or money or materials. Our God is the one who laid the cornerstone of the earth. This is our God who speaks out of the whirlwind, who speaks to us and says, who are you? We have a baptism today, an incredible thing, welcoming a new member into the body of Christ. And for two, this is incredible, for 2,000 years, 2,000 years followers of Jesus have been baptized into his death and the promise of new life in the risen Christ. In a few minutes, we will all reaffirm our baptismal covenant Will you resist evil and repent? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? This is our answer. This is who we really are, a people serving all people, because in doing so, we serve God. We are not defined by our skin color or our gender, or who we want to marry, or where we live, or how much money we have, or even what has happened to us in the past. We are affected by those things, but we are not defined by them. As Ruby Sale says, under the divine gaze, we are not defined by the material and the transactional. We are defined as essential in the fullness of of our God-given humanity that transcends what the world says about us because in God's eyes, our humanity is irresistible. God asks, who are you? Because unchanged from our self-centeredness, our humanity is irresistible to God. Job later repents bears his humanity to God, and God responds out of the whirlwind. Jesus says we must become servants because in serving, we bear that irresistible humanity in all its pain and weakness. We align ourselves with the highest order of the cosmos in baptism. We reunite ourselves with God saying, I will with God's help. And God responds because our full humanity, absent of that self-centeredness, is irresistible. And it is irresistible because in its purest form, we reflect the handiwork of the God who laid the cornerstones of the earth when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Remember who you are. You are a possession of the God in whose power the entire cosmos came into being and who has promised to strengthen and sustain you with that same power. You are marked as Christ's own forever. Amen.